Today, we're gonna to cover a retrofit of a home for health, comfort, and energy efficiency benefits. But this time it's a little bit different because this time it's my own home. Okay, so what we have here is an AV Jennings brick veneer home with a timber structure, hardwood, concrete tile roof, Tassie oak floorboards, plaster ceiling, none of the plaster has been removed. And what we have done to this place is completely change the thermal performance of the walls, the floor, the roof or the ceiling. And then we've completely overhauled the ventilation strategy for this home as well. So one of the key performance improvements for this house has been that we've removed or reduced the drafts by 90% and now we're maintaining 22 to 23 degrees quite comfortably all year round with one 3.6 kilowatt split system air conditioner. Let's take a closer look. So firstly, let's cover what we've done to our ventilation of this home. All ventilation is completely idiot proof and automated. So the toilet operates with a PIR. It's all ducted directly through the roof to the outside and it has an inline fan and draft stopper. Let's have a look at the bathroom, which is actually integrated in this particular situation is running off a timer switch which gets the flow of moisture from the shower head running to this point reducing significantly any moisture that may settle on the surfaces this here is a humidity sensor so it will kick off with the flow from the starter switch but none of the actual exhaust systems for the bathroom and the toilet have an on off switch. So these exhaust systems can't be left on 24 by seven, but they will operate when they are required, which is super important when it comes to building performance and comfort. So this here is what we call a heat recovery ventilation system. It's not like your normal heat recovery ventilation. It's actually decentralized. So, we have two pairs here. One is pushing air out for 90 seconds and its partner is pushing air in. When it turns around, they, they basically, the ceramic wafer inside the unit absorbs the temperature of the air going out and puts it into the fresh air coming in. This ventilation system guarantees a certain level of CO2 for the occupants of the house. So we've kept the plaster in this house. So we've had to retrofit. And what we've done is we've used a product called Enviroflex that is basically a, a fluff, which brings the R value of these walls to around about 2.9. So this insulation is aquaphobic, which enables it to be in contact with the brickwork but I have basically retrofitted all of the walls here, including underneath the windows. They have to drill in uh, to the mortar from the outside. So wall insulation is great, but making that connectivity of the ceiling insulation to it is absolutely pivotal. And a lot of buildings come undone with this junction. So what we've had done here is we've had a trade go around the whole perimeter, moving back tiles and spray foaming behind the corners to make that junction as well insulated as possible. And we'll go through and we'll show you some of these thermal images now of what that looks like before and after.
When you're doing a retrofit for building performance, you want it to last the life of the building and you do it once. The interior decor of the kitchen may only last 10 years or the duration of fashion trends. So we had a crummy old kitchen here and behind the kitchen were some spectacular holes to the inside of the wall cavity. So we've had the kitchen completely pulled out and then we've completely sealed and membraned behind the kitchen, including the oven and the fridge. There was basically a vent behind the fridge directly into the roof space, which is crazy nowadays. That sort of ventilation is not required for fridges. So we've meticulously, and it wasn't pretty, We've corked up behind this kitchen. Once we were satisfied that everything was sealed up, we then started installing the cabinets. So air tightness in the kitchen is absolutely important and they can leak quite a lot. What ends up happening is trades put their services through and the, the basically behind the joinery, there's just big holes where spiders and mice can just freely roam behind the kitchen. So the trades need to be sealing all penetrations to the plaster, for example. So any uh, power points, plumbing, there needs to be square cutouts in the actual joinery and then all of the caulking is done to the plaster, not to the joinery. What's important is that we've got an airtight building envelope and we don't have creepy crawlies entering our joinery from these wall cavities. So now floor insulation. This is what we are in contact with for a good majority of the time that we're in our homes. So it's, we're conducting energy from it. So it's actually quite important. What's also important is that floorboards, ta old Tassie Oak floorboards, they leak a lot of air too. It's almost death by a thousand cuts. So what we've done here is we've put a, we've retrofitted a open cell spray foam that enables us to get a confident connection of insulation to the floorboards. But also it's peace of mind when you put bats as insulation on subfloor, gravity usually wins and the insulation comes away from the floorboards over a period of time. So when it comes to heating and cooling a building, if your insulation is consistent all the way around and you have a decent level of air tightness, your heating and cooling loads are significantly reduced. So we used to have a large box air conditioner here. We used to have a large box air conditioner on the other side of the house. We used to have an evaporative cooler. We used to have a gas ducted heating system. All of that has gone and we're now left with just the one 3.6 kilowatt split system, which can heat and cool this home no matter what the temperatures are outside because of its passive building envelope performance. So with the draft air tightness testing that we've done here, we've managed to reduce this number from 30 air changes an hour with 32 km per hour winds, all the way down to below three air changes an hour with 32 km per hour winds. So what that means is that we've got way better comfort in this home. The performance of the insulation is improved because air needs to be still for insulation to work and the longevity of the building is significantly improved. So we've gone through all these items in just a general retrofit of a really old home. We understand that times are a little bit tough these days. 2020 has been a really challenging year and the government has created some incentives for renovation budgets. And potentially some of these things that we've been going through today could fit inside them.